Good evening. My name is Mun, and as Miles mentioned earlier, I work for a design and media consultancy firm called, um, called Mad Squared. But I also serve on the media team at Alpha Asia Pacific. And uh, I really have a passion for Alpha. It's something that's really close to my heart because I came to faith through Alpha. And that was a, quite a number of years ago. So it's an absolute privilege for me tonight to be here speaking at Alpha. Every week, we go out onto the streets and we ask people on the streets a question related to the topic of the week. So let's take a look at what these people have to say about the question this week on healing. I don't believe in God can do healing, no. I don't believe in miracles like that. I believe more in the placebo effect. I think you heal yourself. Uh, that water can be turned into wine? Probably not. I wish it did. Um, that would be interesting. There's loads of different things I can class as a miracle. To some person will say that's luck. I believe. I believe in science. Well, I'm quite a lucky person, so I like to think that's something to do with God anyway. Listen, there's miracles every day. Like My, my, my kids are all healthy. Somebody recovering from an illness which they were destined to die from and not given any chance of survival. I suffered from alopecia and my hair was not meant to grow back at all. I guess you class that as a miracle then. I've witnessed a miracle. For a medical person to tell you that your hair's not going to grow back and your hair grows back, then... I believe in things that I see that are real. But I'd be interested if somebody could show me. So, I have a real passion for fish. And I don't mean rearing fish. I mean more like eating fish. You see, this passion can be quite a dangerous passion because... Well, at least in my case it is, because I'm not very good with fish bones. So once, I was having dinner with my whole family, and my mom cooked this really yummy pero ikan dish made with fish stomach, which is known to have lots of fish bones. So I was, since I liked it so much, I was he happily eating up all the leftovers, and until I stopped chewing all of a sudden, I noticed this pain in my throat. That's when I realized I must have choked on a bone. Not a good thing. How many of you have experienced such a thing where you have a fish bone stuck in your throat? Yeah, I, whoa, that's quite a lot of people. And if you come from a Chinese family like me, tell me if you haven't heard of all these old wives' tales about how to get rid of fish bones stuck in throat, like... Swallowing mouthfuls of rice, eating a banana, drinking vinegar, drinking Coke. Well, I tried all of it, but still nothing worked. So then I remembered, I watched a Hong Kong TVB drama once and they did this. They took a bowl and with a chopstick, this is what they did. And that literally meant, meant, in Cantonese, it meant bone down while hitting the bowl. I have no clue how that's supposed to get the bone to go down. But since I tried everything and nothing else worked, so I tried this as well. Well, I wish I could tell you that the bone went down after I did that, but unfortunately, it didn't. So in the end, my mom had to take me to the doctors. It was possibly the longest 45 minutes of my life when the doctor finally removed the bone from my throat. Well, the point of my story is, well, I do have a point in this story. The point is, I am really thankful to the medical profession, to the doctors whom, who we have, because they are such a blessing. I believe that all healing ultimately comes from God. The doctors who treat us, they are using their God-given abilities. And even the healing process that comes when we are sick, that's also a natural healing process that comes from God within our bodies. Before I was a Christian, well, obviously the question of, does God heal today, was pretty much a non-question. I didn't believe in God, and I thought, why would God heal one person, but what about the millions of others out there who are 
also sick and yet God hasn't healed them. So what's the deal here? It just all seemed rather strange and random to me. Well, even after I had become a Christian and I started reading the Bibles, I read about all the healing miracles of Jesus, I was still a little skeptical, I must say. I didn't have much expectation that God would still, still heal today. I still remember this story told by Nikki Gumbel about this pastor called John Wimber. Now, back in 1982, John Wimber visited HDB Church in London, and he was telling the story about his life, how in the 60s, he used to be a rock musician, but then he had come into, um, he had an, had an encounter with Jesus, and he gave his life to Christ. And um, after that, he started reading the Bible, and he read about all these healing miracles in the Bible, and he called them the stuff, the stuff that Jesus did that he and his disciples did. And so he started going to church and he would sit there and eagerly wait for them to do the stuff. That's what he called them. And now that John Wimber is a pastor, this is what he's saying, that this is the sort of thing that we ought to be doing in church. I remember running Alpha once in a homeless drop-in centre in Pataling Street. We call it Alpha on the Streets. Before the Alpha session on healing started, we prayed and we asked God for words of knowledge. And words of knowledge are basically supernatural revelation about things that may be wrong about some people that the team could not have known naturally. So we had impressions, we had pictures, and sometimes we also get sympathy pains. And so I read out a whole list of things that we had received words of knowledge that we've got from um, our prayers. And then I said, now I'm going to ask, if any of you here responds to this list, would you please step forward because we'd love to pray for you. Now, I admit that after I'd said that, I was a little nervous. Well, what if no one responded? I would look quite stupid, right? And among our lists, we had um, pain in the ankle, pain in the left hand. And so I waited and suddenly, there was this man who raised his hand slowly. Let's call him Bill. So Bill, he responded to pain in the left hand and pain in the ankle. See, this is the thing about Bill. Oh, by the way, um, there's going to be a picture of Bill coming up on the screen. Um, he's the guy in the red cap with his leg stretched out uh, in blue jeans. Um, the thing about Bill is that he had been reluctant in believing in Jesus. He didn't believe in Jesus. But the funny thing is that he kept coming back. Week after week, we saw him. So that particular day, Bill responded to the word of knowledge for his ankle and left hand. Now, Bill used to be a hairdresser. He used to cut hair uh, for a living. But after he had suffered a fall and hurt his hand, he couldn't be a hairdresser anymore. He couldn't work, and so he was out of a job. So before prayers, he couldn't even lift his hand. Like he would do this and he would go, ah, because it hurts so much. So then we said, can we pray for you? And so we laid hands on him and we just prayed a very simple prayer for him. Nothing long, nothing fancy, just a very simple prayer. And after prayers, we asked him to test out his hand. And I said, can you try raising your hand? So he did. He, he did this and then he did this and then... He raised it all the way up, and you should have seen his face. Like, he couldn't believe it. And so he, then he started swinging his arms like this to really test it out, because early on, he could not do it. And he was healed just like that. So there was this look of bewilderment on his face. And so I was very excited as well. So I said, great, God has just healed you. So I grabbed him and went over to the other side to pray for another guy called Jeremiah who responded to the word of knowledge for um, dark skin, wrinkled skin, and um, pain in left hand. And so we got Bill to lay hands on Jeremiah who, um, who couldn't clench his fist like he would clench it halfway like this, and that was about maximum it would go. And so we just laid hands and again prayed a very simple prayer. And so 
after prayers, we asked Jeremiah, test it out, test it out. And this time, he could clench his fist and he reported a significant reduction in the pain level in his hand. And by this time, uh, Bill, he was just completely dumbfounded. Like he couldn't believe what has just happened. Well, Bill later on went on to give his life to Christ. And after a few months, I stopped seeing Bill. So I felt a little disappointed that he had left us. But then many months later, I saw him again. He had come to the center. And this time when he walked in, he was like a different person. He was smiling and then he came up to me, he shook my hand and he, you know what he told me? He said, thank you so much. Do you know that I found a job? I'm now back to hairdressing. So after God had healed him, he gave his life to Christ and he found a job. He's back to cutting hair. So it's an amazing story. Now, what does the Bible actually say about healing? Actually, it's in God's nature to heal. God loves you and He wants to heal you. He wants you to thrive. He wants to, you to experience wholeness in your life. And there's a verse in the Bible from Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, that says this, I am the Lord who heals you. The word Jesus, it actually means Savior. And the Greek word for save is sozo. Now, sozo has two meanings. First of all, it can mean I save. Well, because Jesus came to save us from our sins and to bring us forgiveness. But then it can also mean I heal. And God is a God who heals. Jesus came to bind up the brokenhearted. And today... God wants to heal and He wants to use you and me to bring healing to those who are around us. You're never more like Jesus when you're helping people around you who are hurting. Think about what you can do as you go around dispensing healing, lifting up those who are fallen, wiping away the tears of those who are crying, restoring the broken, helping people overcome their addictions. Basically, just being someone who brings healing to other people's lives. That's a verse from Proverbs that talks about the tongue that brings healing. The tongue that heals is a tree of life, but a devious tongue breaks the spirit. With your tongue, you can bring healing to division. You can bring peace, encouragement, and even forgiveness. Most of the hurt we experience in our lives come from relationships. But funnily enough, at the same time, most of our healing also comes through relationships. And this can be through relationships with God as well as our relationship with other people. But in the Bible, it's not just about emotional um, health, psychological health, or spiritual health. It's all those things, but there is also physical healing. And what I hadn't realized is that 25% of the New Testament um, Gospels are taken up by the healing miracles of Jesus. Jesus had compassion on people. Matthew says this, that Jesus went through Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. The thing is this, it wasn't just Jesus. Jesus said to his followers, that's like you and me. Um, and he gave them authority. He gives you authority. And so this is not just for special people, people who have the gift of healing. It's basically for every Christian, and that includes all of us here. So he gave them authority to go and to tell the good news and to heal those who are sick. And that's what they did. As you read the book of Acts, they went around healing people. And as you read church history, all the way down the centuries, that's what you see. And still today, God is healing people. Three years ago, I was living in Mozambique in Africa, attending mission school. Now, during the weekends, we would go on outreach um, missions into the remote villages. So there, there was this one weekend where we went into this remote village about three hours from our base camp. 
And it was a very poor and basic village. They didn't have running water nor electricity. Basically, this is what they did. Um, in the morning, when the sun rose, they wake up. And when the sun sets, they just go to bed. So when we arrived, the first thing we did was we set up our tents and then we brought out our generators and we set up the projector because we were going to show them the Jesus film. Now imagine this, it's a big deal for them because they are not used to watching movies. So I'm going to show you a picture of um, what the village looked like. This is a really big deal for them. As you can see, the whole village showed up. And I mean the whole village. Before screening, we prayed and we asked God for words of knowledge and for God to reveal things that He wants to heal in people that day. And so after the screening, we had a short talk, short sermon. We told them about Jesus and we told them that God wants to heal them today. Now here's the thing. For a remote village like this, that didn't have access to medical care, no doctors, no medicine. When you call forth the sick, literally the whole village came forward. I had people pulling, tugging at my clothes, asking me to pray for them. Pray for me, pray for me. I have never prayed for so many people consecutively in my life. And I remember that I was a little nervous at that time. During that time, there was no time for... Um, long-winded or fancy prayers. It was more like, God, help! So I remember that my friend was already praying for this Mozambican woman, and so I joined her in, in prayers. So we laid hands on her eyes to pray for her. You see, this woman, she was blind. So we prayed a very short prayers for God to restore her eyesight. And so after the prayers, we removed our hands, and all of a sudden, this woman was shouting in, in, a, in her local Mozambican language. And I didn't understand her. And our translator who was with us, he translated it to us saying that she can see, she can see. A miracle had just happened. God literally had just healed this blind woman. I couldn't believe my eyes. I didn't know what to think. I saw her eyes. It was, well, normal. I could see the black pupil in her eyes, just like mine. But before we prayed, her eyes were completely white, like the pupils were white, like someone who had cataract. And after prayers, she could see God had healed this blind woman. So when Jesus sent the disciples out and when Jesus spoke, he spoke a lot about the kingdom of God. He said, go and heal people and tell them that the kingdom of God is near. The kingdom of God is like God's sphere of influence. And when God's sphere of influence is total and complete, as it will be one day, then there will be no more sickness. So, that's a future aspect to the kingdom. One day, Jesus will return. And there are about 300 references in the New Testament about the return of Jesus. There'll be a new heaven, a new earth. There'll be no more cancer, no more pain, no more sickness. But right now, not everybody may be healed. And Paul says it like this. We groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the redemption of our bodies. The total redemption of our bodies will only happen in the future. So then the kingdom of God has this future aspect, but it also has this present aspect. It's like you get a foretaste of what's going to happen in the future. When Bill, the man in Pataling Street, was healed, when that blind Mozambican woman was healed, it's, it's like God is giving us a glimpse into the future, a foretaste of what's to come. What it tells you is that this is what it's going to be like in the future. But right now, we don't experience total healing. So what about healing today? If God calls you in, into the medical profession, well, that's a great calling. If you look at the roots of hospitals, it goes back to Christian institutions which was set up on, in the belief that people mattered to God because we are all made in His image. So God sometimes heals people in ways we can comprehend. But 
sometimes he also heals people directly and in ways which are incomprehensible. So we shouldn't stop praying, especially when we don't see healing immediately. Of course, I've also prayed for people and they've not been healed. I think of a friend of mine called Nathan. Now, Nathan, he suffers from stage 2 colon cancer. He passionately believes in Jesus and in healing, and yet God has not healed him. He's done everything. He's gone to the doctors, he's seeking treatment, and we've prayed for him. In fact, we've prayed for him more than once, but he's still not healed. But you know what? What really touched my heart is what Nathan said. This is what he said. God has given me salvation and eternal life. I'd love for him to heal me. And if he does, that would be a bonus. But even if he doesn't, he is still a good God. What a man of faith. Now, John Wimber used to say, when we pray for no one, no one is healed. Now, we pray for everyone and some are healed. So I want to encourage you to keep going. One of the things we found is sometimes you need to pray more than once. Well, in the Bible, even Jesus prayed more than once. There was this story of Jesus praying for a man who was blind. He laid hands on him and he said, then he said, how are you doing? And the man said, I can see, but it's like trees walking. So what did Jesus do? He laid hands on him again and prayed. And this time, after the second time, the man could see clearly. So, I'm reminded of a time when I was visiting a village church in Kathmandu, Nepal, and this girl, young, very young girl, walked in, and she complained of pain in her lower abdominal area. Um, her photo will come up on screen. And due to her pain, her walk was crab-like. She couldn't walk properly, so uh, she was walking a bit like this, and I'm not exaggerating, she was literally walking like this. And so, I asked if I could pray for her. She said yes, and so we started praying. Again, a very simple prayer. So after the first time of praying, I asked her, how are you feeling? And she said, mm, still the same. She, she still felt a lot of pain. And so I was feeling, oh no, a little discouraged. Um, but then I remembered, well, even Jesus prayed twice, so I'll persevere. So I prayed again. And after the second time of praying, she reported that mm, the pain seemed to have lessened a little bit, but it's still there. And I said, great, let's give thanks to God for the 50% healing, but let's contend for full healing. So we prayed again for a third time. And do you know what happened? After the third time of praying, she was completely healed. She just stood up and she just walked around normally as if nothing had happened. And she just went to grab lunch and started eating. So... God had just healed her after our persevering prayers. So don't give up. Even if you're not healed, prayer is still a blessing. I believe God uses us today to heal people. He wants to use you to heal people. Now, on a more practical side, what do we need to remember when we pray for healing? The first thing we need to remember is that it is not us ultimately who heals but God. None of us have healing powers. It is the power of God that heals when we pray in Jesus' name. Next, there's really no technique involved. There's no need for hype or shouting. None of that is necessary. Just simple prayers. Pray simply, but with love. Jesus always prayed with love. He had compassion on people. His motive was love. And so that should be our motive too. We also do not put burdens on people. We never say, it's your fault. You don't have enough faith and that's why you're not healed. We never say that. If someone is not healed, it doesn't mean that God doesn't love them or God is punishing them. So we always remember that we pray with love. And we found that words of knowledge, these gifts of the Spirit, they really helped. It's one of the ways in which God speaks to us. And sometimes He can show us pictures or an impression or sometimes even sympathy pains. Now, what is a sympathy pain? Sympathy pain is when you feel pain in a certain part of your body, but you know it's not your own pain. And somehow you sense that 
it could be God telling you that He wants to heal someone um, that day. So it's a very practical model that we use here. Actually, this evening, before Alpha started, the leaders and helpers, we gathered and we prayed for words of knowledge. So at the end of this session, um, we're going to have a little time in our small groups. And if you respond to any of these words, feel free to come forward and ask for prayers in your groups. So how in practice do we go about doing it? The way I would do it would be like this. I would say something really simple like, well, I believe God loves you and that He wants to heal you. So would you mind if I pray with you? And if the answer is yes, then I would say something like, oh, do you mind if I uh, lay my hands on your shoulder? Because Jesus says in the Bible that we can pray with the laying on of hands. But make sure that it's an appropriate part of the body to touch. And then I just pray a very simple prayer, something like, in the name of Jesus, I command this pain to leave and for this hand to be completely restored. Amen. And that's it. Simple, right? I believe every one of us can do this. Now, before I end, I want to leave you with a more recent story that just happened a few weeks ago. I was... Um, running our usual Friday Bible study in Pataling Street. And there was this guy called Sonny who came up. And he had been coming to the center for more than a year now. So that particular day, I noticed that Sonny's feet, they were abnormally swollen. It's almost like twice the size of his normal feet. And they look like elephant legs, like really, really swollen. And to make it worse, um, he clearly had an infection because there were lots of open wounds on his feet and there was pus, like yellowish pus, like oozing out of his feet. So after the study, I approached him and I asked him what was wrong with his feet. And he told me what was wrong and he said that his feet really hurt when he, when he walked. So I asked if I could pray for him and he said yes. So my team and I, we gathered around him, laid hands on him and prayed for him. And... After prayers, guess what happened? Well, absolutely nothing happened. Yes, nothing happened. His feet were still very much swollen. And so he politely just thanked us and he left. And I thought, oh, that was that. But throughout that entire week, my heart just felt so heavy. I kept thinking about him and wondering how he was. And throughout the entire week, I kept praying for him in my, in my daily prayers. And so one week went by and we went back to the center the following Friday and I saw him again. And when, this time when we saw him, he was so full of joy. He was smiling and I said, hey, Sonny, uh, how are you? And then I asked him and, I, and then that's when I saw his feet. Take a look. This is a picture a week later. And his feet were back to normal. Like this is normal, Okay. <laughs> And even the open wounds, they have pretty much dried up. So I was amazed and I asked him, how did this happen? And then he told, this is the amazing thing. He told me that the day after we had prayed for him, he was on his way to the center and he was running up the stairs. And that was when he suddenly realized, hey, hang on, how come my feet doesn't hurt anymore? And that's also when he realized that the swelling in his feet had completely gone. Now, that is a miracle right there. Infected, swollen feet like this don't just go away overnight, let alone without medication. So God had completely healed Sunny. So my encouragement to you is this. To tell people about Jesus, try and be a person who brings healing to the lives of people wherever you go. Whether it's in your school, in your family, in your community, be someone who prays for the sick, who binds up the brokenhearted, who lifts up the fallen, who wipes away the tears of those who are crying, who brings healing where there's division. Be someone who brings healing wherever you go. In Jesus' name. So I mentioned earlier that uh, earlier in the evening before Alpha started, the leaders and the helpers, we gathered and we prayed for words of knowledge. And so um, 
we've, uh, I'd like to now invite those who have received these words to come forward and to speak these words forth. And I want you to listen carefully. If you respond to any of these words, when we get into our small groups um, later on, be at ease to ask people in your group to pray for you. I believe there's someone here who's been struggling with um, dry eyes. Um, someone with anxiety that restricts your breathing. A fallen arch in the foot. Uh, a problem that is kidney related and like dried lips that is really painful. A little bit of a stabbing pain through the top of her head on the right side. Uh, lymph nodes. And we also got diabetes. So there you have it, the words of knowledge for tonight. So right now, I'd like to encourage you to get into your small groups and pray for each other. Thank you.